Hey there, I'm John Cox with Board Game Geek, and today we have Dave Killingsworth here, uh, Solar Flare Games. We're looking at Robotech Crisis Point. Correct. This is uh, our second um, game in the Robotech line that we're working on. Uh, we did Force of Arms last year. This is uh, now in pre-order. We've uh, already started production, so no Kickstarter. It's just a pre-order. Um, and this is this, it's kind of an extended iteration of the mechanic from Force of Arms, but way more sophisticated and strategy driven. Uh, Force of Arms was a pre-built center that you kind of moved around and played around the outside. This is simplified outside. You build the middle as you play and the cards trigger off of each other and cards you will play later in the game are more effective the better you configure what you're doing in the center. So we really took what we called the, the, this mechanic that I created way back for a game with cows stealing aliens. This is the ultimate strategy expression of that game. Okay, so could you go over uh, just like the, the basics of how, sure. how we play out here to the middle of the board? So basically it's, it's, it's built into, it's, it's a four phase game. You have the tactical, the token, the hero in command, and then scoring. This, the four, the 16, the four by four 16 in the middle mm -hmm. is considered the battlefield, and the outside area is considered the combat zone. And when you're playing, you have base cards, strategic locations, uh, unit cards, and combat cards. Combat cards are the ones you'll play around the outside of the board face down. So mm -hmm. they're powered two through nine. And what it is, is if I'm playing these two sides and you're playing these two sides, to score this card at the very end, we look at my shit, my fighter here and here, how much power versus how much power you have. Mm -hmm. Highest power gets a card. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's simple, but it's the manipulation of the board, which is the strategy and the complexity. So on my turn, in my hand to play in the middle, I have one base, two strategic locations, and eight units. So every game, you're only going to play five of the eight units because you, once you play eight cards, so one base, two strategic locations, and five of your eight, mm -hmm. so the game very different every time because you're trying to figure out the synergies that work best for you based on what the other guy is doing. Sure. And so it's very different. So you'll play one of those, one of those eight cards out here. Um, like for, if you play the searchlight, uh, that's not a good example. Let's say we play the infant fighter biroid out here in the center. Like we played it here. You'll collect five combat tokens, which are these, that match your style. And these are worth one attack or one defense when played on one of the cards out here. If I play, you play it on mine, it's plus one attack for your scoring. If I play it on your, you play it on yourself, it's plus one for defense. In addition to that, all eight of your unit cards are different. They have a victory point value for whoever captures it, but each one has a different ability at the bottom. So mm -hmm. they really, some of them have better abilities if they're near each other or next to each other, and then the other player is trying to prevent you from doing that. Sure. And so as soon as you play a card out here, one of the combat cards, which is the two through nines, like if this was me and I was playing here, I would play one of them face down around the outside. And we'd go back and forth for eight turns until the outside is full face down and the center is full face up. Then whatever tokens we've earned, we would play two at a time back and forth, basically modifying the combat zone mm -hmm. by adding an attack and defense where you think you need it. And so this is strategic, area control, bluffing, resource management. It's, we kind of took all those little pieces from all these different games we ever played and went, okay, let's cram it all into one game. So uh, my friends like to play me and trick me into walking into their power. Yeah. So it, it's, it's very, you're always thinking ahead because once you do that and you play all the tokens, the token phase is over. Then you have, you have a set of four command cards and four hero cards. Each of these specifically either adds tokens, removes tokens, or manipulates the board. Mm -hmm. And so if you've prepped the board the right way, some of these are better for you to play than others, and that's where the strategy comes in, because you have eight of them. You'll play two of the four heroes and two of the four commands, so you're not always playing the same cards every game either, so that the strategy and the choices keep mounting up as sure. you go. And so you'd play, you go back and forth, each play one until you've played four. Then you would flip the outside of the board up, and you resolve all the cards. Like I said, we'd go here and say, okay, this is this is you. Mm -hmm. And say you're playing the Army of Southern Cross. We'd see what your two combat cards added up here versus my two combat cards plus any tokens. And whoever has the highest value, this card goes in their deck. You put a token on there. Uh, who won that spot? Because there's uh, secret objectives in the game too that if you can resolve one secret objective, you can score it. Mm -hmm. And some of them are like capture three of the four middle. So if I had done this, I'd get to score that secret objective. Uh -huh. But if you had somehow realized what I was doing and did that, then I don't get to score the objective. That makes sense. It's kind of a, we call it the built-in tiebreaker because I had seen some people play themselves to a, a standstill as hard as that is in this. Secret objectives pretty much eliminated ties completely. So yeah, we've, we've put this together. It's already in production. And like I said, we have a pre-order up now where for the cost of the game in retail, we're doing discounted shipping, and then there's a bunch of Robotech exclusive items that can only be received through the pre-order. Like we we took 
the Force of Arms, and we took um, Crisis Point art, and we actually created a custom set of Robotech themed playing cards. Mm. We use their logos as the suits and all the art from the game, and you can only get this from us in the pre-order. There's a variant comic cover for uh, the free comic book day Robotech comic. Yeah, It has our art on the cover, has our name on the cover. So there's a bunch of extra stuff. We wanted something that was service to the fans that they would really enjoy and give them an opportunity to get the game early. But it's the same price retailer. They could get it at a retailer later, so it, it doesn't hurt the retailers. Sure. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks for showing us uh, uh, Robotech Crisis Point, Dave. Thank you.